होप यू आर डूइंग वेल इन प्रीवियस सेशन आई डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द केस कंट्रोल स्टडी एंड नाउ टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द कोहार्ट स्टडी कोहार्ट स्टडी इज द टाइप ऑफ एनालिटिकल स्टडी एंड अमंग एनालिटिकल स्टडी इट इज ऑब्जर्वेशनल स्टडी और नॉन एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टडी इन कोहार्ट स्टडी द कोहार्ट मीन्स a group of people sharing the same attributes having the same characteristics for example all those who are exposed to the use of tobacco as compared to those not exposed to the use of tobacco so here the focus is on risk factors in a cohort study design the two groups are made on the basis of exposure for example smokers and non smokers these groups are followed for a specific period of time for the outcome of interest and the outcome of interest in these studies are the diseases so this study start with a person exposed and follow forward for disease maybe for 1 year for 3 years for 10 years so it depends on the nature of the study for how long time researcher is following the persons so direction is from the exposure to the disease because it starts with the person exposed and the outcome is the disease so direction is from the exposure to the disease this study design is preferred if the researcher aims to determine the incidence and the risk factors associated with the disease incidents are the new cases in the specific duration of time if the researcher is going to to conduct a research for 3 years then the occurrence of disease occurrence of cases in these 3 years these are the incidents incidents means new cases while prevalence is the combination of old and new cases both old plus new cases to so that's the prevalence and incidence is the new cases so researcher aims to determine the incidence and the risk factors associated with the disease in cohort study there are two types of cohort studies prospective cohort study or concurrent cohort study these are also called as concurrent cohort study and retrospective cohort study which are also called as historical cohort studies let's see both of them one by one first is prospective cohort study or concurrent cohort study in prospective cohort studies the investigators conceive and design the study recruit subjects and collect baseline exposure data from all subjects before any of the subject have developed an outcome of interest the outcome of interest is the disease so the researcher move from exposure to disease in the real time the subjects are then followed into the future in order to record the development of an outcome of interest the follow up the follow up can be conducted by mail questionnaires by phone interviews or through the internet or in person with interviews physical examinations and laboratory or imaging etc for example a study investigating the association between cigarette smoking for 10 years or more and lung cancer If the researcher wants to choose a prospective cohort design then his study would start in the year 2020 and ends with 2021 2022 or the duration depends on the researcher for how long the researcher going to conduct the study with the data of this study cumulative incidence incidence density can be calculated and the association can be seen by the relative risk this is the prospective cohort study design from the population researcher select a sample on the basis of risk factor that is exposed to that risk factor or not exposed to the risk factor of interest the risk factor which the researcher is going to investigate and then from exposed for example in case of smokers and lung cancer the smokers who do not develop the disease and smokers who develop the disease similarly in non exposed cases those who do not develop the disease and those who develop the disease so these are four groups 
on the basis of risk factors and researcher can measure the cumulative incidence and incidence density and by generating the 2 by 2 table he can calculate the relative risk so time is in the forward direction and the direction of inquiry is also in the forward direction advantages of perspective cohort study are that multiple outcomes to a single exposure can be detected here in case of smoking a researcher can see other diseases with the lung cancer so multiple outcomes of single exposure can be seen incidence rates are calculated in these studies incidence is the new cases so we can see the new cases in this study it helps in calculating the relative risk and the attributable risk temporal association is best studied in prospective cohort study it allows the assessment of dose response relationship and some other advantages are that researcher have the complete control over the data and it helps to accept or to refuse the hypothesis with a high degree of validity this advantages of prospective cohort study are that it is expensive time consuming strict follow up is required for these studies and not suitable for diseases that have a long incubation period not suitable for rare diseases and loss to follow up can occur in such studies due to migration or death of the respondents the other type of cohort study is retrospective cohort study retrospective studies are also called historical cohort studies and sometimes in a prospective cohort study with a long outcome for example the cigarette smoking for 10 years and lung cancer study loss to follow up long wait for the completion of the study and funding source are issues so in order to save time and money and to complete the study in a shorter time the retrospective study is the ideal alternate in retrospective cohort study disease already occurred but the direction is still forward from moving exposure to disease from risk factor to disease this is the design of the retrospective cohort study population at risk this is the population from the community and researchers select the sample similarly two groups exposed in case of smoking and non smoking smokers are exposed and non smokers are not exposed and among smokers who develop the disease and who not develop the disease similarly in case of not smokers who develop the disease and who not develop the disease direction of inquiry is still in the forward way in the forward direction advantages of retrospective cohort study are that it is less expensive as compared to prospective cohort study and less time consuming follow up data is obtained through records so follow up time is saved disadvantages of retrospective cohort study is that there is no control over the data nothing can be done about missing data because researcher gather the data from records nothing can be done about missing data sometimes information on a variable of interest is not available in a prospective cohort study the investigators are typically present from the beginning to the end of the observation period however it is possible to maintain the advantages of the cohort study without the continuous presence of the investigator or having to wait for a long time to collect the necessary data through the use of the retrospective cohort study in other words although the investigator was not present when the exposure was first identified he reconstructs the exposed and unexposed population from records and then proceeds as though he has been present throughout the study for example 
If the 10 year cigarette smoking and lung cancer study using a retrospective cohort design was being done today, the investigator would like into records and identify the people who were smokers in the year 2010. In this manner, he has selected a cohort who has been exposed to cigarette smoking for 10 years. He would now determine the outcome of lung cancer today. This was by using the retrospective cohort design. He has been able to complete a study which would have taken 10 years from now in a few months time. So this is what the cohort study is and the types of the cohort study. In next session, I will discuss on the interventional or experimental studies. Subscribe the channel and press the bell icon if you are new and also share it with your friends and colleagues. Stay blessed.